to Constantity TV's Close Up on Workplace Law. We zoom in on recent developments of interest to employers, to their attorneys, and to the human resources professionals. I'm your host, Lee Tyson, and I am a partner in Constantity's Atlanta office. Except, as you can probably tell, I am not in Constantity's Atlanta office right now. I'm at home. Uh, like a lot of you, a lot of people who are working from home now in response to the COVID-19 crisis. And as terrible as that is, and as awful and scary and tragic as this whole situation is, working from home is kind of crazy. It's pretty wild. And not only am I learning that, but a lot of my clients are learning that. And so there are a bunch of legal and practical questions that are kind of entertaining that have been coming up. And I thought that since I am at home, and I do not have the ability to interview anyone because first of all, I don't have my usual IT staff helping me out and setting up the computers and making it happen. I, I also, I have no idea how it works. I don't have the first clue. So I don't know how to get another person on here talking. So instead it's just gonna be us today. And I thought that maybe what I would do is go through some of the legal issues that uh, come up when you are working from home. And then also just discuss some of the personal ones too. Just some of the, uh, practical effects of working from home as we all learn them together. Okay, practical questions. First and foremost, quarantine dress code. What is it? What does it mean? Um, well, I would say that if you're gonna be doing any kind of teleconferencing, it's it's a good idea to be dressed sort of just appropriately. Obviously dress codes are a little bit different now, but just something appropriate from you know the waist up, if that's the case. Um, waist down, it's great how basically pants have become obsolete. Um, I, let's see if we can actually show you. I'm wearing my, I'm wearing pants made out of cats. They're cuties, they wear cuties. So I'm, I have cat pants on, um, but this part looks professional. At least we don't have to worry about pants anymore. Okay, number one legal concern. Uh, what's our biggest liability risk when we're dealing with teleworking? Probably the biggest risk from an employment perspective is going to be the Fair Labor Standards Act, the FLSA. Are we paying people appropriately? Because the law hasn't changed, even though there's a pandemic, we still have to pay people for all the time that they work if they are non-exempt employees. So when you're dealing with non-exempt employees who are teleworking, it's particularly important to make sure that they are accurately recording their time. And it's also a really good idea to kind of be checking in on that and making sure that all time has been captured. Uh, if you have a time keeping process or procedure software or something that they can use while they're at home, that's great, but still be checking in on it. If they do have some sort of automatic lunch deducted in your software, probably best to turn that thing off. Another consideration too is that you may want to have a maximum number of hours um, that people can work in a day just to try to keep hold of what people are doing when they're outside of the workplace and make sure that you have controlled expectations and controlled costs. Another practical question, home alone, should I cut my hair? No, no, you should not cut your hair. You should never cut your own. Do you see why I'm wearing a barrette? I'm wearing a barrette. I don't wanna, I don't wanna go into why. Go reorganize your spice cabinet. Don't cut your own hair. Don't, mm -mm. Mm. Legal question, what other liability concerns are we looking at when we're talking about teleworking? I think probably the second biggest one is going to be um, information security. Just the fact that you have people who are taking potentially confidential information, trade secret information, customer information, client information, financial information, and they're taking it home with them. Uh, the best thing to do, if you can, is to make sure that as much as possible, people are working on company-owned devices, laptops, phones, tablets, whatever. But to the extent you can kind of hold that information in and have it on company devices, that's that's the best case scenario. Even better, or in conjunction, also good, is having a VPN, a virtual private network that people can uh, log into to do their work. Um, at the very least though, if you have a policy, now is a good time to remind people about the fact that they have confidential information and they need to be particularly careful about working with it. And you may even want to think about doing some training and maybe some online training about making sure people aren't falling for phishing scams or anything else while they're at home staring at their computers for as many hours. And Lord knows we all have the time, so now's probably a good time for a little bit more training on that. Another practical question. Um, when you're stuck at home and you're eating nothing but processed foods and frozen foods and a lot of pizza and drinking a lot of wine, um, should you be doing anything to stay in shape? 
Um, my personal answer, speaking for me, no, absolutely not. What did I just tell you? Pants are obsolete. You don't need pants anymore. It's a brave new world with no pants. So, also I tried it and it went really horribly. Okay, next legal question. Um, how about the FFCRA? How does that affect teleworking and are people who are teleworking entitled to any benefits under that act? And that's the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. And it's the new law that deals with leave for people who are affected by coronavirus directly or indirectly. Either they have it or a family member has it or whether or not they're affected because they either they have an underlying condition or because they have to take care of kids because all schools are closed and child care centers are closed. And the FFCRA provides for leave, for paid leave for people in that exact position. So they are covered. Um, on the other hand, you have a lot of flexibility when people are working from home. So you may want to talk to your employees and see whether or not a modified schedule would work or maybe working in the morning, maybe in the evenings, maybe half days. The FFCRA also allows for intermittent leave. So you can still be paying for some hours when the employee can actually work and doesn't have childcare obligations. And then they can be entitled to benefits for those hours where they're unable to work to make up their regular schedule. So that's a possibility as well. But right now, more than anything, uh, with your employees, you can actually do work from home and be productive. It's a good idea to be as flexible as we possibly can. Practical question. Um, working at home, your coworkers are now your family members. Where do you lodge complaints of hostile work environments? I feel this question. Uh, it may have been submitted by my husband, um, who I'm now working from home with uh, for the first time. And um, sexual harassment claims against both of us, very, very high through the roof. What we've decided to do is deputize the dogs. Um, they're now our HR department. Uh, he started it. and our cat who is so mean she is um in charge of accounting okay last legal question um this doesn't apply to me at all i don't even telework none of my people are teleworking we're still having to go to work every day or we're shut down or i'm trying to figure out who's covered by this new law and who can receive leave and who can't or even if i'm a covered employer or i'm in healthcare. There are so many questions that this crisis has raised, um, practical and legal. Uh, fortunately, we have compiled a really great resource. Uh, Constangi.com, if you go to our webpage, you will see a link to our coronavirus page. And there is just a huge list of resources available to employers. You've got a frequently asked questions sheet that is being constantly updated by a task force of attorneys that has really been working tirelessly. And we also have a brand new podcast, the Work and Play podcast. Okay, last question, and the one that probably hits home the most for most of us. How are we all going to get through this and stay sane um, and with a reasonable drinking habit? Really, this is an employer's chance to shine. Now is a really good time to reach out to your people and offer them the resources that they may need. Mental health is incredibly important and this is an incredibly stressful time for a lot of people. Especially people who are alone or people who are facing childcare obligations that they didn't previously have and have kids at home. We have an, a really incredible office manager in the Atlanta office and she has every morning sent us this really, really positive email wishing us a great day and giving us a bunch of resources, things that we can look at, training we can get, CLE for attorneys, uh, even museums that have digital online courses you can take or things that the kids can watch. There's a bunch of resources that way too. It's nice to be remembered. It's also fun to do little contests, have a costume contest with stuff people have around their house the next time you do a conference call, a teleconferencing call, or dress your dogs up because that's just something I really like to do. Uh, but there are a lot of really good ideas and fun ways that you can stay in contact with people and you can remind everybody out there that we're not alone. And that's it for this episode of Constanti TV, this very special quarantine episode of Constanti TV. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Please be safe. Uh, keep your workers safe. Keep your families safe. And we look forward to seeing you again on the other side. Bye-bye.